Good evening. Good evening. That is funny watching Chad pull that rope. <laughs> oh, I can remember when you were a little guy still doing that in the Luther League. <laughs> kind of fitting. Yeah. Oh, good evening and welcome to our, uh, our Lenten service or Wednesday night. Uh, some of you may know I am Travis Fink. Feels good to kind of be back here. I think it's been a Hope it's been almost a month since I've been in church, so yeah, become a member again, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, with being visiting and, and being under the weather a little bit, uh, feels good to be back. Uh, I got a privilege to go to Menno, uh one of my first Wednesday nights, and it was great because I asked the girls if they'd want to come along and sing with me. And they said, well, Dad, why are you going to Menno? You know, I said, well, Rod's going to be here, so I'm going to go to Menno for him. Like, no, Dad, we're going to go listen to Rod. We'll see you later. <laughs> <sighs> so I see where I stand. <laughs> so uh, is there any announcements that need to be made for the benefit of the congregation? Uh, there's a uh, council meeting afterwards. Um, uh, Mildred is back in her nursing home room. She is. Okay. She'd just get back, or is that uh, Monday? Monday? Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, if there if there isn't anything, let us begin tonight with our uh, our Lenten text. It comes tonight from Mark 14, 66 through 72. It's printed in your bulletin. And Peter, and as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she said, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke and curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Our call to worship tonight come, is from Psalm 37, 1 through 22. Please rise. We will read it responsibly. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in land and befriend, faith, and befriend faithfulness. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as a light, and your justice as a new day. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the ones who prosper in his way, over the man who carries out evil devies. For the evildoer shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in the abundant peace. But the Lord laughs at the wicked. For he sees that his day is coming. The sword shall their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The 
For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they will have abundance. But the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the ashes. They will be consumed like the smoke of the The wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. Let us pray. Dear Father, as we gather tonight in this church and with the loved ones around us and those that are visiting, let us be a blessing to those that are around us, those that we talk to, those that we think about, pray for. Lord, we, we ask that you come tonight, be upon our hearts. We ask that we may be a, a beacon for you, Lord, in this Lenten season. We ask that our light may shine for you through us to them. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue with our opening hymn, 62. Please rise. Let us bow our heads before the Lord and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you 
and to your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Declaration tonight comes from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This take to heart as we go through the Lenten season tonight, that this is the season that he has sent his Son for us. You may be seated. The first reading comes from Isaiah 51, 1 through 16. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you, for he was not, for he was but one when I called him, and I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion, he comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out for me, from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will near out, and a, out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. Listen to me. You who know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law, fear not the reproach of man, nor the dismay at their villings, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteous will be forever, and my salvation to all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut the Rahab in pieces, who pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and Signing shall flee away. I, I am he who comforts you. you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies, of the son of man who is made like grass? And have forgotten the Lord your maker who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. And you fear continually all the day because of the wrath of the oppressor when he sets himself to destroy. And where is the wrath of the oppressor? He who is bowed down shall speedily be released. He shall not die and go down to the pit, neither shall his bread be lacking. I am the Lord your God who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord hosts, in his, hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth and uncovered you in the shadow of my hand. Establish the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, you are my people. 
The second reading comes from Philippians 2, 5 through 18. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your, salva your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, and so that in, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain, or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Please rise. The gospel tonight comes from Luke 22, 47 through 55. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus and kissed, to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the ear and healed him. When Jesus said to the chief priest and the officers of the temples and the elders who had come out against him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay, a hand, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away bringing him to the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Here ends the reading. God be praised for his glad tidings. Let us confess our holy faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated at this time. Let's continue with our offering, which half goes to the AFLBC and the other to the safe place of Eastern South Dakota. Please rise. Father, as we gather here tonight, there is a lot of concern, a lot of weight on hearts out here tonight. Lord, the one that we are asking for tonight in reverence is for Pat Clum to help her and her brother that received not so good news today. It will be the end of time for him at a certain point this year, they say. But we all ask, Lord, in our hearts to be with Pat, to bless her, that she may have the strength to protect and to help as far as she can with her twin brother. There's just something, Lord, that we know that having a, a twin that was conceived together, a bond that those two have, Lord, we ask that you ease the burden for whatever is coming their way. We know the end is time, but we also know, Lord, that we get to spend it with you. That would make this Lenten season such a greatness that we know that even in the valley of the shadow of the death that we are to fear no evil, for you are with us, Lord. They rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Let that rod and staff comfort them too, that they may come to peace with you, for you, Lord. Let their light shine through one another to each other, that it's also the light that comes from you. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you give us, being able to help one another where we can, Lord. Praying for those that need it, serving a meal to those that need it. For where we know that what we do to one of these, the least of these, we do unto you, Lord. Lord, we ask for your help this Lenten season that we know Easter will be coming around the corner, and we thank you. Thank you for staying alongside of us and for also sending us your son. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Let us continue with our next hymn, 417, Just As I Am. Oh. 
Grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our risen Lord. Amen. I want to read to you tonight John's version of what happened. We read on our gospel reading, which was Luke, but I want to read what comes out of John 18, 10 through 14. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? As we look at the passage on this Lenten season. I was doing a study on Malachus here, and when Barry and Pastor, we all got together for our meeting, when they wanted to do witnesses, this came up. And all the pastors were sitting there, Morris, Rod, 
Pastor, Barry, everybody was sitting there, didn't want to say anything. So I jumped on this one. I thought this is the one that I, I would like to have for our Lenten. And as, our, as we were going through our Lenten season this year, it is witnesses. And look at this passage, I can't think about, I can't help but think about how we as sinners think that our actions are right. How God has to sometimes clean up our mistakes. Now in both of these passages here, in Luke and in John, we hear Jesus has got everything under control. He knows what's going to happen. It's not as going to be a surprise to him. He knows where he's going. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what to say. He knows what to do. But along comes Peter. <laughs> Just can't leave well enough alone. He's going, to, he's going to do something about it. So he draws his sword and he cuts off Malachi's, the high priest's servant's ear. And here Jesus has to pull him back calm him down, and fix the problem. And I just can't help at thinking about what Jesus was thinking to Peter. I've got this. Do you not know the cup that I'm supposed to take? So, as we're sitting here, Peter puts a sword back in and all I can think of is clean up garden four. So Jesus reaches down, touches the place where Malachi's ear was, and restored his ear. Now as we go through our Lenten season this year, I had to think of a, a friend of mine that built a sword when he was in high school. Now, I don't think this is the type of sword or the size of sword that uh, Malik or that Peter had, because you know, boy, that'd be pretty big for him to carry around in those days. I'm pretty sure it was quite a bit smaller. But to have your ear cut off by one of these almost has to be painful, let alone remarkable. And I had to think about our lives are so much like a sword. Now, this was just made out of rusty, old stuff laying, metal that was laying around. I'm pretty sure his shop, his dad's shop. But it took time. Does anybody know how to build a sword? I don't. He did some studying on what it takes. But what I did find out that it takes is it takes time, it takes heat, it takes hammering to get the right density, the right sharpness, and the right strength. And God is doing that in our lives, just like the sword, where he is taking different aspects of our lives and putting heat to them. We, I, I don't know, everybody's is different. But there's times where Jesus is putting you to a stress test. What is happening in your life now? He is taking a piece of old, junky, rusted, discarded metal. He's putting it through some heat. He's pounding on it, saying, I need you this long. I don't need you this long. I need you, I need you uh, stronger. We're going to put some more heat to you. We're going to hammer a little more on you. We're going to sharpen your edges. We're going to make you useful 
for me, God is saying. Now, I don't know if you've ever built a sword, but I'm pretty sure the first one that built it didn't have it all together right away. And when he thought he did, I'm pretty sure he was still wrong. Does anybody know what's in the base of this? What they put in the base of a sword to balance it? Pretty sure the first one that built a sword took it. Oh, I got a good handle. Okay, yeah, that's right. It's too heavy. So what they ended up doing is they would hollow it out and fill it with lead. Make it more user friendly, more balanced. When you're sitting there thinking, okay, God, I'm ready for war, or I'm ready for what you want, I'm ready, I'm ready, Sit here am I, send me. No, no, you're not ready yet. We're, we got some heating yet to do on you, and, and uh, you're not quite balanced yet. We're going to have to throw a little more lead at you. A sword in the right hands can be a useful tool. In God's hands, it can be useful when, he's, when you're ready, when he's ready for you. A sword in the wrong hands, a child by instance, for instance, would be not so good. As we are going through this Lenten season, just remember that God is not done with you yet. If you think you're shiny, if you think you're well balanced, there might be another stress test coming. I don't know what everybody's going through, but I do know that there are things that God will put you through to make you sharper, to make you shinier, to make you more balanced. You just got to be ready and waiting for it. Right, Braden? So Malachus is here. We're going to get on to the witness part of this now. Why... Did Jesus, and in my, my, my Bible verse here, it says restored. Why, why did Jesus restore Malachi's ear? Does anybody know besides pastor? Because if Jesus did not put the ear back, Malachi could have went to the high priest and Peter could have been charged with a capital crime for striking the high priest. In those days, the capital crime was death. And it goes back to John 8 here, when Jesus says, I told you, oh, sorry, this was to fill the, sword, the words in which he had spoken. Of those you have gave me, I have not lost one. So Jesus had to restore the ear. He had to clean up duty of what Peter had just done. What does it mean to restore? We got, we got some car guys here and some, some restoration guys. What does it mean to restore? To bring it back to new. Jesus restored Malachus's ear. He had to restore the ear. He could not even leave a scar. Because if there would have been a scar, what could Malachus have done? He could have went to the high priest and said, Hey, look, there's proof here. He cut my ear off. Well, he, Jesus restored his ear. He put it back new. I know of surgeons, and I know they can't do that. 
And that's what Jesus does in our lives when we ask him. Lord, can you restore me? Can you take me back to new? Yeah, he can. Jesus will remove all the evidence that anything ever happened. Now, I can't imagine what kind of a sore that would be to have your ear cut off, but to have it fully restored is an act of God. So that night, Malachus had to be the first witness, first witness to God. And even though Peter, you know, as aggressive as he was, he wasn't going to let him take Jesus without a fight. And I give him credit. I, I, I really do. I, I give Peter credit. He was fighting like that third monkey, getting on the boat, and it's starting to rain. He was not going to let him go without a fight. And in this instant, Jesus also gets to be witnesses for. So, so like when we talk, Jesus, if we repent, our sins are washed away. They are no more they are forgotten. Not even a scar. Which is my sermon title, Why No Scar? So as this year, as we're taking the witness to Christ, Malchus was the first one that night to witness what Christ can do and what he can do for to forgive. So how do we do this when Jesus is coming? Every year we celebrate this, the end this event as though Jesus is going to the cross. It's like a birthday. We remember what Jesus did and is still doing for us every year. We get the opportunity to be reminded, to be a witness, and to point to the cross. As I was part of this, we all needed to become witnesses for Christ. What has Christ done or is still doing for us now. Like that sword. Is he polishing you yet? Is there a time where you're getting maybe a little more balance? Maybe some heat to you? Maybe you're just getting even shinier. I'm thinking tonight, Larry, how Pat, She's being shined. A woman of that magnitude to take care of her brother. She's being shined. <coughs> Even though he is not here, Jesus still lives with us. Every year, every day of the year, we get to look to the cross and point out who our Savior is. But we also get to do that two and four others. And in one day, we will get to be with him. But until then, we all need to be witnesses to Christ in our own lives. I can't help but think of what ears did we cut off this year of our friends and our neighbors, maybe our kids, our significant other. How did we hurt them? How did we take them down? But that's the beauty of Lent. We get to repent, and we get to be restored. Our scars are no more. We are fully restored. We don't have to worry and see those scars every day because through Christ, they are washed away. And like Malachi says, scars are no more. You can't go to the council and say, hey, look at this. It is gone. So as we go through the Lenten season here, let us not forget about what Christ did for our sins because we all know that we can mess up like Peter. 
but plan that on what we did or what we said. But remember that God can restore the ears that you cut off, the ears that you may be not proud of. I can think of a couple. But also to be a witness to what Christ has done for you so that when somebody asks you, what, you have no scars? You can clearly point at the cross and say, no, with Jesus, there is no more scars. I am fully restored. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, help us to be a witness this Lenten season, this year of 2024. Help us to be your witness for others. Lord, we ask that we may be a, a bright beacon of what you have done for us and what we are doing for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us continue with our next hymn, number 78, The Old Rugged Cross.
That's only, you got four. You said please rise. Right. Yeah. <laughs> for the four. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Don't confuse the old man. I want to say, though, till my trophies at last I lay down, it doesn't matter what we gain on this earth. We can't take it with us and exchange it someday for a crown. I hope that you guys take that to heart this Lenten season. So. Please pray with me. Uh, let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Serve the Lord. Cookies and bars and coffee downstairs afterwards. <laughs>